Hey, Ronnie Dahl for Wheeling Australia. Welcome to Land Cruiser Stage 6. A lot has happened since Stage 5 and this is to answer a lot of questions as well. So we're going to go down to the Land Cruiser now and go through the whole vehicle of all the stuff that's been added to it since Stage 5 and also going to talk to you about the trailer on the back. I've done some mods to it. First things first, we've changed the decal. I think it looks a bit cooler. Kind of looks like Hot Wheels. I don't know, that's my thoughts anyway. But the main changes to the vehicle, the shower tent, the awnings, and I'll show you those up at camp. But before that, we have a new set of tires, new set of rims, a new suspension. There's quite a bit that's happened actually, and new brakes. So we'll start with the brakes. So I'll put on terrain tamer brakes. They're slotted and drilled. And I do actually notice a difference when I go to stop. So there is actually a noticeable difference. I also got the handbrake kit, feels the same. Didn't make much difference at all. The handbrake is still pretty crap. And you know, a Toyota handbrake is still pretty crap, as we all know. Let's go on to the rims. So I purchased negative 25 mil offset rims. And I'll tell you what, negative 25 offset from zero offset, it's honestly a massive difference. I really, really notice it. Also, the vehicle on the highway feels more stable as well because I've, I've brought out, you know, I've brought the wheel track out. The whole car just feels so much more stable. And we're only talking 25 mil, so it's quite amazing. Negative 25, we'll see how that goes. We'll see if I, you know, go through bearings any faster or any less or if it's the same or whatever. Uh, they are dynamic rims as well. The tyres, I scored a set of maxes for uh, product testing and... How many tyres have I had on this vehicle now? I had the Nittos to start with, then I had the Generals, I had the Toyo Open Country, and now I'm on to the Maxxis Razor MTs. Now these have been out in the US for a little while, but these are very new um, here in, in Australia. We only just managed to get these. So I was the second vehicle in Western Australia to get these put on. And uh, so far, it's the quietest tyre, and I'm not just saying mud tyre, I'm saying the quietest tyre I've had on the vehicle so far. It's, I'm quite amazed because the gaps on the blocks are quite big. You wouldn't think that. I'm just starting to hear noise now. They've, they've been embedded about 15,000 Ks. Longevity report to come. But so far, this is my favourite tyre so far. We'll see what happens. We'll see how long it lasts. The 315 R16. Mud and snow. Mud terrain tyre. And quite aggressive wall. Aggressive big gaps in the tread block. That's about all I can say until we have done 50,000 Ks on them. Suspension, so what's happened? Well, since my suspension saga of having incorrect suspension installed and then incorrectly trying to fix it, uh, it was just a, a bloody mess. So now I actually have proper suspension and I ended up going for the Dobinson. So we have the reservoir mount here. So they are remote, res, well, remote canister shocks. I uh, had those in for, I don't know, 25,000 k so far and uh, yeah goes pretty well longevity report to come on that one as well so we have gone with a three inch lift front and rear and it now sits at a true three inch lift i know it's set up right because i have touched the bump stops which means i have the full travel there's nothing core binding or anything like that on the back i still have parabolics however i changed to the full dobinson kit so the old EFS parabolics came out and the Dobinson ones came in. Now the Dobinson ones are rated to 50 kilos less than the previous ones. However, they seem to have held up pretty well so far. And uh, I've done two big trips towing trailers and they're still holding up pretty well. I will get them checked when I get back because um, just to make sure that with all the rough driving we had with the trailer, just to make sure that the springs haven't sagged a little bit, I might just get them reshaped but uh, it still looks okay. I have an ARB Frontier tank here. It's a 180 litre tank. Now you're probably gonna question, why do I have a 180 litre tank when I already have two 86 litre fuel tanks above it? So now I have 352 litre capacity. Well, it's because one of those tanks above, I'm going to change to a water tank at some point. Um, I was going to clean it out, but I can't think of any cleaning agent that's going to make it safe for drinking. So I'm going to rip one out and put a new one in. But look, comment below if there is a cleaning 
product you can use to clean the old diesel out of a tank. Um, but I kind of, I don't know, I don't think it's possible. One thing I forgot to mention about the ARB Frontier tank is that um, when you're actually on the highway, it improves the way your fuel gauge moves on the dual cab. However, when you're off-roading, it actually makes it worse. Um, when you're on corrugated roads, uh, up and down terrain, once you get to the last quarter, it's something, it just gets scrambled. It's really frustrating actually. You don't know how much fuel you have left. It was really frustrating. So the gauge will move and then the fuel light will come on. I'll park up uh, for a while and then all of a sudden I've got another quarter again. It just, it keeps dropping backwards and forwards. I don't know what's going on with it. So I figured when I get back to Perth, I would take it back to ARB, which I haven't yet. And now I've run a few tanks on the highway and no issue whatsoever. So it's weird. It's something to do with the vibrations and stuff. So I need to get to the bottom of this. This is a number five military trailer. It's called a number five. So they used to tow these behind Land Rovers in the army. It has a pintle connection. And uh, I got this from an auction. This one here is year 1969, believe it or not. Now I know it looks like, it looks a bit like a pig at the moment. It's because it's in progress. So changes in progress. I changed the Land Rover wheels. It really puts into perspective how big 35s are on this little trailer here. It's the same rim, the same tire as what's on the vehicle. I carry two spares, so this means that I can swap around, doesn't matter which one blows out, if any do blow out. So all the mods done are by OnTrack Fab. We've pulled two leaves out. He's put a wider axle in it to bring the tires out. We got four jerry can holders. One, two, one more to come here. And here's number four. I can throw so much stuff in here, the swags in here, I just, yeah. It's just handy to have a trailer to tow all my stuff. So the reason for me towing trailers a bit more often now is because I have a bit of a GVM issue on the vehicle. If I fully load the vehicle up, then I'm a bit too heavy. So the box on the back of this tray is going to go. I'm going to do a smaller box on the back and then I'm still going to use, uh, I'm still going to do trips without a trailer if they're short trips, but long trips, the trailer is going to come along because my back seats are full of camera gear. And then all my other gear is in the back of the ute, which then overloads it. So without having to move stuff to get the stuff, that's where the trailer comes in handy. If I don't get to use a product test, a different trailer, this is a trailer I'll be using. Otherwise I'll be chopping and changing trailers here and there until I find one that I really, really like. So that's pretty much the story about the trailer. More to come. Radio, lighting. With lighting, if you're a frequent follower watching your videos, you know that I heavily rely on my lights. I've been offered different types of lights. These are good, so I'm keeping these on. Uh, I have done a review on these already, and I did say that I was gonna try something different, but nothing else has really you know, stood out to actually replace a, a twin light because we got the LED ring and we got the distance here. It, it works so well for me. But what I have fixed is up here. I've put two 20 inch, uh, also Life Force LED um, light bars on the roof. Now they kick ass over the previous ones I had and they actually are more of a spot. The ones that before were a flood. So these ones up here are filling the gap between with my lighting and yet yeah, the lighting for the highway now is, is great. I never used to use my light bars on the roof on the highway. Uh, one, because it used to be illegal, and two, because they didn't do much. They just created glare on my bonnet. But these I've adjusted, they shoot further, so I actually use them on the highway now, and they actually help me a lot. Around the side of the vehicle, we have all these other smaller lights, the 20 watt rock lights. I've got one on either side of the bar work, which are on a on a switch, which I'll get to. It's all part of the PDM, and I'll get to that. I've got lights on the roof rack, lights on the rear uh, canopy roof rack, and lights at the back, which go in when I reverse. All right, welcome to the office. So what's new in here? Well, with tied in with my electrical system, I have 
this switchboard here, this switches, well, this controls all my accessories on the vehicle. This is a PDM by Perf Diesel Performance. I was part of the development of this unit. So it was exciting times when I got to test it finally. So reverse lights, LED lights, roof and the front bar lights. And then I also have the HID lights on the front. Here I have the side lights on the bull bar. We've got the work lights which are on the back. They run off the back battery. And we've got the roof lights which are above the roof rack and they run off the main battery. Here I have the winch button. So this is my winch, winch isolation. When I press this, the winch is activated and it links both my starting batteries together, which gives me more power. I can also activate it while I'm driving and I've got all the lights on if I want to use both batteries. Also, when I air up, I can press this and it links both batteries. This one on the other side is for the intercooler fans. However, I have a standard intercooler, so this one currently does nothing for me, which I may change in future. So that's pretty much the electrical system. Uh, another cool thing about it, we've kept things ADR compliant. So when I'm in two wheel drive, as soon as I reach speeds of over 40 kilometers per hour, the front side lights will turn off automatically. If I'm in four wheel drive, however, I can have all these lights on in any combination that I want. All of them on, half of them on, whatever I want. So it's, it's a really cool system. Four wires to this unit, four wires to the, um, to the whole module. It's like smart wiring. There are no relays, there are no fuses. Uh, obviously there's some power cables as well. And it also goes to the back. Here I have my fridge, and here I have my 12 volt power, which I can toggle and turn off. So basically, um, if I have a problem with anything, as I mentioned, no fuses, no relays, it'll flash here and then I'll hold the button down to reset it, or to, yeah, to reset the circuit. So that's the cool part about it. No fuses, no relays. Now to one of the best things I've ever done to the interior of the vehicle. And that is, voila. These are Stratos seats, aftermarket seats. Highly recommend changing the Land Cruiser seats, especially if you do long distance travel like I have. I've just done a, well, by the time I get back to Perth, it'll nearly be 15,000 kilometers in the space of four weeks. And these chairs, <laughs> they're so good. Uh, just for the pure fact that they hug, they hug your legs and your ass into the seat and your waist and your back into the seat. So when you're, dry, when you're going off-roading, it keeps you in your chair. You're not sliding around and then you get a really tight core and by the time you get to camp, you're actually really exhausted. Uh, this is the most energy I've ever had off-roading and just long distance driving, these seats are awesome. So way better than your standard Land Cruiser seats. And the armrests. Highly recommend armrests as well. These are awesome. Uh, something else as well, this thing here. Brilliant. So, I'm sitting in the vehicle, arm here, arm here. Off we go. It is so comfortable. It's the most comfortable I've ever been in an off-road vehicle. Something else that I think wasn't in the previous stage was this matting. Uh, this was good to start with, but it wears. So this, this is a Clark rubber sort of, it catches all the dirt. What it really does is it catches all the dirt, which is really good. But uh, on the driver's side, on the floor, I've worn holes in it. So I've got to change that to something else. So this was good. Now I'm not really liking it too much. Down here, we have a fire extinguisher mount, but there's also an air compressor underneath. So we moved the air compressor from the back to here. That's where I now pump my air up. Now the only disadvantage I guess is when it's raining and you've got to have this door slightly open, but that is the only, only disadvantage. I now have all the weight at the front here. Uh, I'm using space that's pretty much not usable. And um, we've tested it with heat guns and stuff because some people were like worried about things catching on fire, but it, it won't catch on fire. It's perfectly safe here. Um, yeah, and it's a good place to mount a fire extinguisher as well. Land Cruiser, power plant time. There are a few changes under here, and there are some things that I've stuck with which I would like to mention. So let's start with the changes first. I've now got two batteries that are cranking batteries. So these are the two that I link to use my winch. They're the two I link when I drive at night with all the lights on. They are the two that I link when I uh, 
I fill my tires up with a tire compressor. Uh, what's the point of doing that? Well, your winch draws a lot of amps. So when you have two batteries, it's got two batteries to draw from, and you'll, you'll know, you'll really notice. If you have a mate that's got two batteries on their winch and you have one, when you both are winching, you can hear the big difference. The person with the one battery, the winch is gonna sound like a struggling. The two batteries, there is no lag in it, pretty much. Over here is the PDM, the one I was talking about with the whole interface inside. It's basically smart wiring for the whole vehicle. So that's right here. BCDC 1225, I have swapped out for a 1225D. That's the Red Arc battery charger. What is the difference? Well, this one here is, is solar ready. The one I had before is, wasn't solar ready. And there's the two batteries. There is an isolator between the batteries that is a 400 amp isolator. Look a lot more on this electrical system in another video, which covers this a lot more. So that link will be down somewhere in the description below. Something I want to mention that I still use, uh, the uni chip that's in here, I still use it. Uh, we changed a few tunes, but uh, the main tune I've still stuck with, we've tweaked it a bit. This is an R&D vehicle, pretty much for Perth Diesel Performance. Uh, I'll trial and test a lot of different tunes and a lot of different settings uh, on all these trips. So I keep three settings that I use and I trial two new ones usually or one. There usually is one or two new ones that I trial out and test. In here I still use the K&N air filter. Uh, this is the second one I'm on and um, I'll, I'll still stick by the, the K&N air filters. I carry a cleaning kit, I carry a re-oiling kit and I've had no problems with them. Some people complain about them. I don't know what, what the issue they're having with it is, but um, yeah, I'm happy with mine. I can clean it. I don't have to carry a spare one, you know, a, a spare paper one. So I can clean this whenever I want. Still running the secondary diesel filter here. And this has actually caught aluminium from my auxiliary tank. Still a bit of aluminium in it. So it's actually caught it. So the importance of a secondary diesel filter um, just kind of gets highlighted there. Apart from that, everything is how it's been. And uh, standard turbo, standard intercooler. I'm not interested in changing the turbo. Equally as exciting as the water system is this shower tent here. And this is also by Quick Pitch. Quick Pitch Campers. Now I could easily just throw a bit of B-roll over this setup, but it is so quick. I like to show people how fast it is to set up. Welcome to the shower tent. So this is the latest addition. Now I'm not going to bang on about it too much because it is in my camping video, my new camping setup, the one I shot with my daughter. So this is basically it here. I actually had a nice shower this morning. This is how it works. Shower rose up here. It's a Primus shower rose sits in here and I can hang all my clothes up here one zip here so once you open that you can access a bag inside up here are all the pump controls so if I want to shower I'll heat a bucket up in the fire flick that one to bucket which is on now and then I have a shower out of the rose if I want to use tap for water I've got a tank. And this is drinking water. That's the main benefit I see to this whole thing. Look, a shower, I could just get a shower bag and do, have a shower, but this is this is kind of luxury. I mainly got that for um, wife and kids at the beach or whatever, get changed or whatever. Uh, but as far as drinking water, I've got 40 litres drinking only coming through this. Let's go to the other side. So welcome to the other side. This cover, is covering two pumps. One pump just drawing out of the tank and the other pump draws out of the actual um, bucket. So you can draw from a bucket or a jerry can for the shower. So this is drinking water only. I do put um, cleansing tablets in there just to purify the water, just to be safe. But it's uh, pretty much kept con contaminant free because it has a separate pump. Also new to the vehicle is a lithium battery, but before we get to that, this is the solar blanket of my choice at the moment. It's the amorphous blanket. Uh, it can take 
uh, you, know, you can take sunlight from overcast conditions, which is why I like it. And I'll show you where this cord goes. It's an easy DIY mod I've done. So this goes all the way to my vehicle. Solar panels on the roof, which you already know about from stage five. I've now teed in to this box. So what I've done here is, um, I call it the flux capacitor, but it's not a flux capacitor. Everything joins into this box here. That way I can plug the solar blanket straight into here. And then that marries into the line from the power line from the solar panels on the roof. All join in, all join into one group come through, go into the box, and then it charges the, um, the battery. And I found that <clears throat> with this blanket, before I got the lithium, I, I needed this blanket, desperately needed it. Now I don't really need it. However, it does give me a good boost if I'm at camp for a good couple of days, like here. And uh, if I'm using lights at night and I'm using the inverter to charge all my camera gear, it's good to have a little boost. But for regular camping, that everyone else does. Two panels, lithium batteries enough. So stage five, I've shown you everything that's in here, the fridges and, and all that. Um, up here, well in behind this drawer actually, I've added a, a lithium battery. And the cool thing about lithium battery is 80% of the power, of the amp hours, I can use safely and it won't damage the battery. So that's this whole cycle. A cycle in, a, in an AGM, is only 50%. So if it's 100 amp hours, you can only use 50 amp hours before the voltage drops too low. With a lithium battery, check this out. 57% left in the battery. So that means I've still got 37% I can safely use. And that puts me at 13.1 volts. That's pretty damn awesome. If this was an AGM battery, like my previous one, it'll be about 10 something 10 point something volts lithium is definitely the way to go the other thing when i drive the vehicle for a couple of hours i've charged the battery right up completely up with an agm you, got, you really got to hit the highway for a while and give it a good couple of hours charge or get like a proper battery charger through an ac plug so yeah that's probably one of my favorite additions at the moment Around the exterior of the vehicle, I've added two cheap awnings. This is a $115 job uh, XTM awning. So I bought two of those. This one here in particular, I got cut down uh, by PM Canvas. I asked him to cut it down for me and he's trimmed it. And we're in the process of designing an awning. Because um, I don't like the big bulky 270 awning, so I used to have one and you can't really adjust them. And I don't like the other 270 awnings with all the adjustable legs and all that, it's just too much. It's too much um, for the stuff that I do. Uh, we'll go to the other side and have a look at the other awning. So I've gone from zero awnings to two awnings. Here we are on the other side. How you going, Marley? This is the original awning, what the other one looked like on the other side. Uh, so this side I've got one going out this way. I left it at the two meters. The other one I cut down to 1.8 just to um, I just thought it looked better, so I may get this one cut short as well to keep it to here. It's actually pretty hard to find an awning that's, that's shorter than two meters. One last thing to finish the vehicle off is this rock deflector here. I used to have the uh, clear one, but it kind of got a bit cracked from rocks, believe it or not. So they actually do the job. So this one I got on eBay, and they're not that cheap actually, they're about 50 bucks. Um, actually, that brings me on to something else a lot of people have asked me about. A few people have asked me in the comments on YouTube where I got these from because they are so hard to find. Believe it or not, the 76 series Land Cruiser and the single cap 79 Land Cruiser, you can get these easily, but they don't fit the 79 dual cab for some reason. The doors are a bit different. So they, these I just got on eBay. There's not many that, that sell them. You just gotta look on eBay and that's where I found them and the, you know, you are up for a bit of a pretty penny. You can get the clear ones, I prefer the, the, the black trim, and I don't like the big bulky ones that come out. These are really awesome, because I can now, I don't like the aircon on, and I like to drive windows down in winter, I like the airflow, so you can actually crack the window to 
you know, just like 30 mil on both sides. You get a nice airflow coming through. You don't get the horrible wind noise. Guys, thanks for watching. If you have any more questions, put them down below. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about was the J-Max rear diff, which you know, was featured in stage five, because that's when I put it in. A lot of people have asked me how it's gone since I've done the, uh, the seal on it. Um, yeah, it's, it, it's kept its seal now. We put gasket goo on it. You can't trust the regular seal that it has. Those, uh, the O-rings aren't good enough on the edge. But once you put gasket goo on it, it's pretty good. That's about it. So questions down below, please. And uh, stage seven, I think stage seven will be a while off because the vehicle is actually getting to a point where I'm, I'm quite happy with how it's set up. But there'll be some small changes to here and there and mainly to the back where the tray is. That's where I want to focus on weight, get the weight down because weight is an issue. Thanks for watching. You can subscribe here if you'd like to support the creation of content like this, patreon.com slash Ronnie Dahl. And here is another video. Let's just make it stage five, if you haven't seen it. Cheers. See ya.